Greetings, my friends. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. But it was in the past when our future events were made, past events that delved into the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why we are here, and tonight, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day so many years ago, when the grave robbers from outer space tried to take over the planet Earth. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimonies of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places, my friends, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friends, can your hearts stand the shocking facts about grave robbers from outer space? The events began high above the ground, aboard an airplane flying in San Fernando Valley. Maintaining 460 knots at uh, 35,000 feet, turning left, heading 230, flight 8122 on pattern Alpha 29. -er. Instruments are not responding. Navigation is locking up. The plane is fighting us. Radio went for landing instructions, Danny. Right, Jeff. Mayday, Mayday. Burbank Tower. This is American Flight 812. Over. American Flight 812. Over. This is Burbank Tower. Over. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. Over. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. Over. Holy mackerel! Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. Are you in trouble? Is there trouble? But take a look for yourself. What in the world? <laughs> That's not anything from this world. It's some type of flying saucer. Look, it, it's spinning. How in the world is that thing flying? Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. Are you in trouble? Are you in trouble? Mayday, Mayday, stand by Burbank Tower. We spotted some type of UFO. American Flight 812, please describe. The object is circular and metallic with a silver color. And there's a small dome on the top of the saucer. <laughs> Hold on, it's moving. Oh my God, is that thing fast? American Flight 812, are you still there? Burbank Tower, yes, the object is gone. You suppose the passengers saw it? I doubt it. Most of them are asleep, but it was quite a jolt, Jeff. I'll check. Good. We'll get them ready for landing. Keep it quiet until we get further instructions. Right. Okay, Danny. American Flight 812 reporting to Burbank Tower. American Flight 812 reporting to Burbank Tower. Please clear us for emergency landing. The plane landed and passengers assumed turbulence. But events continued as the unknown flying object landed near a graveyard outside Burbank. All of us on this earth know that there is a time to live and that there is a time to die. Yet death is always a shock to those left behind. Just at sundown, a small group gathered in silent prayer 
around the newly opened grave of the beloved wife of a man stricken with sadness. The funeral over, the saddened group left the graveside. It was when the grave diggers started their task that strange things began to take place. Come on, Lou. It's getting late. Let's bury her up and get out of here. Yeah, I don't care, care much for digging when the sun goes down. And it's supposed to be a full moon tonight. Well, let's get started. Hand me that shovel. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait a second. Did you hear anything? Uh, I thought I did. Oh, man, I don't like hearing noises, especially when there ain't supposed to be any. Uh, yeah, uh, this is sort of spooky-like. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're getting too old for this. Uh, hey, uh, who's that woman? Where? Where? Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Come closer. Look into my eyes. Oh, no, get, get away. Get away. Stay back. Get away. Closer. <laughs> closer. Closer. Oh! The grief of my wife's death has become greater and greater agony. The home we had so long shared together has become a tomb. Sweet memory of her joyous living. The sky to which she once looked is now only a covering for her, her dead body. The ever beautiful flowers she had planted with her own hand has become nothing more than the lost roses of her cheeks. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Confused by his great loss, the sad man left that home and walked aimlessly into city traffic. Struck down by an unaware truck driver, the old man returned again to his wife in the graveyard. At the funeral of the man, unknown to his mourners, his dead wife was watching. Join us, husband. Join us. <laughs> First his wife, then he. Tragic. This is a most unusual funeral that it takes place at night. Tell me something. Why was his wife buried in the ground while he sealed in a crypt? Something to do with family tradition, a superstition of some sort. Oh. Well, it's getting dark and very late. We best be on our way. Why, it sure is late. Look over there. Are those two men sleeping? Uh, he's not sleeping. He's dead. <laughs> As the police were investigating reports of an unidentified flying object at the Burbank airport, a team was dispatched to the graveyard when they received a report of two dead bodies. Led by Inspector Daniel Clay, the police arrived at the scene. Who found them? Two women were paying their respects for someone who died. The medical examiner been here yet? Just left. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. Did you get their statement? Yeah, yeah, as much as we could. Uh, pretty scared. Yeah, finding a mess like this ought to make anyone frightened. Mm. Have one of the boys take the guy and the girl. Take the girls back to town. Okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Look around a little. Once you get beyond those lights, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. I brought the flashlight from the patrol car. You be careful, Clay. I'm a big boy now, Johnny. I'm going to walk through the graveyard and see what I can see. Okay, Inspector. Oh, jeez, Larry. It looks like a bobcat tore through him. Uh, say, Lieutenant, 
What do you think about that airplane that saw those flying saucers? Do you think that could have landed around here? I don't know, Larry. I don't know. L- Lieutenant, do you you get that funny odor? Oh, oh, how could I miss it? Oh, jeez. Oh, look. There's the morgue wagon now. Come on, let's go meet it up at the road. Hopper! Hey, Hopper! Where are you? Never a cop when you need one. (laughs) Hey, hey, you over there. What are you two doing? We've been looking for you. You're looking for me? Why? Look into my eyes. Closer. Closer. Hey! Hey, stop! Closer! Stop or I'll shoot! Come closer. You must receive my gift of death. Come closer. It it sounds like Clay's in trouble. I bet that order we smell has something to do with it. Oh, hurry up. He's over here. Quick, check his pulse. Oh, no. Is he dead? Yeah, yeah. He's messed up bad, Larry. He's messed up bad. As those two back there, you suppose that sauce or whatever it was had something to do with this? Oh, your guess is as good as mine, Larry. But one thing's sure. Inspector Clay is dead. Murdered. And somebody is responsible. Kelton, come quick. Yes, sir. Get back up to the car and get on the radio. Tell the coroner that he's got to make another trip out here. Well, how about Jamie? Uh, Do you want Jamie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell her not to leave. Have him him get down here. Inspector Clay is dead. (laughs) Meanwhile, Jeff Trent, the pilot of the airplane who witnessed the flying object, went home with his wife, Paula. That's the fifth siren we heard in the last hour. Something's happened down at that cemetery. A lot of police cars and lights. I tried to see when I drove home from the airport, but I didn't see anything. You still seem to be up there somewhere. Maybe I am. Something about your flight? (laughs) Yeah. What happened, Jeff? I saw... I saw a flying saucer. A saucer? You mean the kind from outer space? Yeah, and and Dan saw it too. When it passed over, the the whole plane went haywire and locked up. Then there was a tremendous wind that practically knocked us off of our course. Well, did you report it? Yeah, I radioed in immediately and they said, well, keep it quiet until you land. Then as soon as we landed, the police and big army brass grabbed us and, and made us swear to secrecy about the whole thing. Oh, it just burns me up. The, these things have been seen for years. They're here and the public ought to know about it. There must be something more you can do about it. But what's the point of making a fuss? The last night I saw a flying object that, that couldn't possibly have been from this planet. But I can't say a word. I, I'm, I'm muzzled by army brass. I can't even admit that I saw one thing. People turning south from the freeway were startled when they saw three flying saucers high over Hollywood Boulevard. Saucers seen over Hollywood, flying saucers seen over Washington, D.C. The army convoy moved into the field. Rockets were quickly set up. Colonel Tom Edwards, in charge of saucer field activities, was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. Then as swiftly as they had come, they were gone, even to the piercing eye of radar and the speeding jet fighters. Quite a sight, wasn't it, sir? The sight I'd rather not be seeing. Are you worried about them, sir? Well, they must have a reason for their visits. 
visits, but that would indicate visitors. Are big guns the usual way of dealing with visitors? For a time, we tried to contact them by radio, but no response. Then they attacked a town, a small town, I'll admit, but nevertheless, a town of people, people who died. Uh, I'd never heard that, sir. Well, it was covered up by the highest echelon. Take any fire, any earthquake, any major disaster, then wonder. Flying saucer. I wonder what their next move will be. Inside the alien spaceship, the aliens were watching over the fear of the Earthlings. How will the aliens continue their invasion of Earth? What will their next move be? Your space commander, Eros, has returned from Earth. Send Eros in. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. Now that the Earthlings have refused us away, what plan will you follow now? Plan nine. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Plan nine. Ah, yes. Plan nine deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long distance electrodes shot into the pinion pituitary glands of the recent dead. Have you attempted any of this plan yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen two so far. We shall be just as successful on more. The living, they have no suspicion of your movements? We had to dispose of one policeman. However, the two who have not been risen, have been risen, have not been seen. At least, not by anyone who still remains alive. Too bad it must be handled this way, however it must. Those who take from the grave will lead the way for our other operations. Yes, Excellency. Continue on. Report to me in two Earth days. Tana, what do you think of my report to Rondo the Ruler? I feared Her Excellency wouldn't take our report this well. Plan nine is a difficult report to present. Well, had she been dealing with our own people, her reaction would have been completely different. She understands the difficulties of the Earth race. The Earthlings are unusual beings. They may be more powerful than we think. This is why we need to take their minerals from them before they learn the power that their planet possesses. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our own problems. But those whom cannot think will not. They are dead. Then one's dead. <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thought when you consider the earth people who can think are so frightened by those who cannot, the dead. And it will be the dead that will provide us the way to getting the minerals. Yes. Once dead, they will be brought to a simulated life by our electrode guns, and we will soon control the universe. Eros, our ship should be regenerated. We better get started. Meanwhile, at Jeff and Paula Trent's house, the noise from the nearby graveyard kept the couple uneasy particularly as Jeff was needed to fly that evening. I still think you ought to go into town and stay with your mother until I get back. This is our home and nothing was gonna take me from it. Besides, most men try to keep their wives from going home to mama. <laughs> That's not the point. That's all the point there's going to be. Now, toddle off and fly your little flying machine, darling. But. If you see any more flying saucers, could you tell them to find another house to buzz? Don't worry about me. Oh, you're the only thing I do worry about. I'll forget about the flying saucers, but there's, there's something in that cemetery and that's just too close for comfort. The saucers are up there and the cemetery is out there, but I'll be locked in up in here. Now off to your wild blue yonder. Okay. Well. You promise you'll lock the doors immediately? 
I promise. Besides, I'll be in bed before a half an hour is gone. Oh, I do love you, darling. I'll see you Thursday. Goodbye, honey. You know, I'm not leaving here until you've locked inside safely. <laughs> All right, darling. If you're especially nice, I may even lock the side door. And be sure you, you keep the yard lights on. I'm heading to the airport now. Goodbye, my sweet. Bye, darling. Paula Trent watched as Jeff drove to the airport. Once gone, Paula locked the front door, but forgot about the side door. Lost in his worries, Jeff arrived at the airport and the plane departed for New Mexico. You're uh, mighty silent this trip, Jeff. Uh huh. I mean, you haven't spoken ten words since takeoff. I, I guess I'm. I guess I'm just preoccupied, Danny. What is it, Paula? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong between you two. Oh no, it's like nothing like that. Just, just that I'm worried. She being there alone and those strange things flying over the house and those incidents in the graveyard the past few days. It's it, it just got me worried. Well, I haven't figured out those uh, crazy spot sky birds yet, but I'll give you 50 to one odds that the police have figured out that cemetery thing by now. Yeah, I hope so. If you're really that worried, Jeff, why don't you read you in and find out? Mackie at Burbank Tower should be on duty at the field by now. She could call Paula and relay the message to you. Hey, Edith. Oh, how do you too, Mr. Silent? I haven't heard a word from this side of the plane since we left the field. Oh, well, Jeff's been giving me and himself a study in silence. You boys are feuding? <laughs> oh, no, Edie, it's nothing like that. Hey, Edie, how about you and me go out for dinner when we get to Albuquerque? Albuquerque? Have you read that flight plan, boy? Uh, what about it? <laughs> we land in Albuquerque at 4 a.m. That's strictly a 9 o'clock town. Well, I got a friend there that can help us. Let's get rest first when we land, huh, Danny? What's the matter, Jeff? Oh, he's worried about Paula. Yeah, dude, she's home by herself near that cemetery. I read about that cemetery business. I try to get you to not to buy too near one of those things. We get there soon enough as it is. He thought it'd be nice and quiet and peaceful there. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. It's quiet, all right, like a tomb. Hmm. I'm sorry, Jeff. That was a bad joke. Mm -hmm. I have to get back to the passengers and say, Jeff, make that call to your wife. Hey, before you go, Edie, how about that Albuquerque plan, huh? You do make it hard to resist your charms, Danny boy. <laughs> From the graveyard, the two walking dead figures saw a light in the distance. The light was from the home of Jeff and Paula Trent. Over here, come this way, follow me, follow me, follow me. Yes, master. Do you see that girl inside the house? Go into that house, get the girl and bring her to me. Yes, master. Hello? Oh, hi, Maggie. How's the control tower tonight? Sure. I'm all right. I just fell asleep. Tell Jeff I'm all right. Okay, Mackie. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Good night. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Jeff lands in Albuquerque all right. Hey! What are you doing here? Must obey. <gasps> Stay away! Stay away! Must not run! <laughs> oh, you're a good boy, Coco. <laughs> oh, good doggy, good doggy. Hey, chilly night tonight, ain't it, boy? Oh, that gust of wind uh, just sent some shivers up and down my spine. Ooh. Ha Help, help! Mr. Calder, please stop your car! I need your help! M Mrs. Trent! M M Mrs. Trent, what, what, what's wrong? 
Look! Must not run! Oh, oh, get in the car! Hurry up! We're leaving now! Come on! Mrs. Trent escaped the near death, and the farmer drove her to the police to tell the nightmare story. Meanwhile, aboard the alien spacecraft, the three aliens led by Eros continued to plan their desires to remove the valuable minerals from our home planet. Uh. It'll be at the hatch in a moment. You can open it now, Tana. Turn off the electrodes quickly. They can't tell us from anyone. Done. The electrodes have been intensified. And we With are now invisible to the Earthlings. With the electrodes fully intensified, it will drain the energy. We won't be able to last long, and the ship will become unstable. But for now... We are invisible. It's hard to find something when you don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> I don't think the lieutenant does either. What are we doing out here? <laughs> I was off duty an hour ago. Uh, don't ask me any questions. I'm just a working stiff like you. What do you suppose that noise was? Whatever it was, it's no more strange than the other things happening around this cemetery. Spirits like old Farmer Calder talk about Miss Trent running from? The only spirits he saw tonight were the ones I smelled on his breath. Well, don't forget. Mrs. Trent claims to have seen them, too, and she didn't have anything on her breath. It was hysterical. Well, true, she was frightened and in a state of shock. But don't forget the torn nightgown and the scratched feet. That's why you're the detective, Lieutenant. Sometimes it's only the brakes, Larry. L Lieutenant? Lieutenant, did, did you hear that? Oh, we hope not. It sure was strange. Oh. Oh, 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 do you know what it was? Well, no more than you do. I know, that's where you're wrong, Lieutenant. Well, maybe this doesn't mean much, but, but Jamie and me, we found the grave that looks like it's been busted into. What? Where? It, it was near where they buried Inspector Clay earlier, uh, just, just over there beyond the crypt. All right, show us the way. Well, look down there. There's Inspector Clay's grave, Lieutenant. Oh, it's been broken into, all right. It's strange. If someone had broken in, the dirt should be piled up uh, here somewhere. But it it looked like it's fallen into the grave. Well, this spot looks familiar, though. Look, we shouldn't investigate any further without the permission of the next of kin. Mm -hmm. hey, let's go get it. Uh, I see what you mean. Uh, the gravestone's down there. Huh. Well, well, let's go down and find out whose grave it is. How? Well, by going down there and finding out. Oh, are you sure you mean that, Lieutenant? If I didn't mean it, I wouldn't have said it. Scared? No, no, not at all. Jamie, you go down there. <laughs> no way, Kelton. The Lieutenant said for you to do it. Oh, why, why do I always get these... Spook details. Monsters, graves, bodies, all, all right. Caskets here, but nobody's in it. Can you read the name on the casket? Oh, no. It's Inspector Clay's grave, but he ain't in it. Meanwhile, at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., Colonel Edwards was met with the U.S. General overseeing unidentified flying objects. Colonel Edwards, close the door. Eddie's. Thank you, sir. I understand, Colonel Edwards, that you've been on tap for uh, many of our saucer attacks. I'm in charge of field operations, sir. Mm -hmm. And you uh, believe there are such things as flying saucers, Colonel Edwards? Yes, sir. You've seen them? Yes, sir. Well, you realize there's a government directive stating that there is no such thing as a flying saucer? Yes, sir. 
do you understand your statement that you've seen flying saucers or do you stand by it rather? Well, yes, sir. You know, this could mean a court martial admitting this against direct orders. General Roberts, may I speak freely? You may. How can I hope to hold down my command if I didn't believe in what I saw and shot at? <laughs> I uh, like you, Colonel. Thank you, sir. There are flying saucers, and there's no doubt they're in our skies. And they've been there for some time. What are we going to do about them? <laughs> Who knows? Then uh, they really are there? Well, I thought you were convinced of that. I am. We've had contact with them. They speak our language? Well, not quite. We received messages from their spaceships. And for a while, it came in as just a lot of jumbled noise. We've developed a language computer. It's a machine that breaks down any language to our own. General, uh, what's this all got to do with me? Well, you, you've been in charge of saucer field activity for a long while. And I think it's about time you heard these recordings. Do you mind? Mind? Oh, I'm anxious. This is Eros, a space soldier from a planet of your galaxy. I realize our language differences. However, we have perfected the dictorobitary so you can now understand that which I speak. Since the beginning of your time, we have been far beyond your planet. It has taken you centuries to even grasp what we have developed eons of your years ago. Our principal purpose is simple. It is to take the minerals from your land. If you persist in denying us our landings, then we must only accept that you do not want us on friendly terms. We have no alternative but to destroy you before you destroy us. With your ancient juvenile minds, you have developed explosives too fast for your minds to conceive what you are doing. You are on the verge of destroying this entire universe. We are a part of that universe. Well, that's the end of that one. Atmospheric conditions in outer space often interfere with the transmission. How many of these recordings do you have, General? Um, even dozen up to now. And that was the last one. We received it over a month ago. Do you think they mean business? We can't afford to take any chances. Come over here. Have you ever been to Hollywood? Uh, a couple of times. Uh, a few years ago. <laughs> well, you're going to be there in the morning. Just a few minutes from Hollywood in the town of San Fernando, reports have come in of saucers flying so low to the ground that the exhaust knocked people down to the ground. There have been even stated claims of saucer landings. Uh, Colonel, I want you to find them and take care of this problem. All right, sir. Now, these are confidential reports, Colonel. Read them over carefully on the plane. Turn them over to intelligence when you get to Los Angeles. And I'll have further orders for disposition. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, Colonel Edwards? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. As Colonel Edwards flew across the country to Los Angeles, the aliens returned to the mothership to share an update with the ruler, Rondo. We are ready to report, Excellency. You are many days late. It was unavoidable. We tried to transmit via televisor, but atmospheric conditions made transmission impossible. You should have transmitted as soon as conditions permitted. I thought time was of the essence. Suspicion has fallen upon our movements. Our ships have been viewed near the point of operations. And what has the extra time gained, Eros? We have successfully risen three of the dead ones. Permit me to see one. Tana, bring in the big one. Use your small electrode gun. Eros, so you understand, I have taken two ships from your command. But that will only leave my ship. Miena, what is the status of the ship? 
Eros, our ship is draining power from the Invisa cover. The power is causing the fuel cells to become unstable. If there any more power is needed, it could cause the engines to ignite and catch on fire. Unfortunately, it is necessary that you continue your mission alone. I have need for your other ships elsewhere. Even though you have risen three of the Earth dead, Plan 9 is far from successful. And you, Eros, must prove it an operational success before more time, energy, and ships may be spent on it. We will not fail. Everything is on our side. Not everything. You do not have the live Earth people agreeing to give us the minerals of the planet. That is correct. Here is the dead one that you requested. Must kill! Stop him, Tana! He's close enough! Turn off your electrode gun! No! Stop him, Tana! Must kill! I, I can't um, get it! It's jammed! Closer! Stop him, you fool! Drop the gun to the floor, Tana. The metal will break contact. <laughs> Ah, oh, the big one has fallen. That was too close! Yes. Let me see this giant so that I will get a better look at him. Yes, he's a fine specimen. Are they all this powerful on planet Earth? This one is an exception, Excellency. What are the other two like? One is a woman. The other, a man. This gives me a plan. Put the big one away. Pick up your electrode gun. Make sure it's in working order before pointing it at him. Whatever made it jam must have been cleared by the fall. Take him back to the ship. This will drain the ship's power even more. I understand, but do as you're told. <laughs> the one must be sacrificed. Reland on Earth, send the man and woman to enter a dwelling. Then cut off their electrokinetic and turn off your ship's discombiture ray. The result will astound and will astound those watching. Astound them enough to delay their attention until you have gained your other recruits from the cemetery. Yes, Excellency. It shall be done. Report to me when this has been accomplished. Eros, the Earth people are getting to what we which fear. Since they will not listen or respect our need for their minerals, they cannot help but believe our powers when they see their own dead walking round again. As soon as you have enough of the dead recruits, march them onto the capitals of the Earth. Let nothing stand in your way. Their own dead will be used to make them accept our need. Colonel Edwards landed in Los Angeles and was briefed on the UFO sighting and the incidents at the graveyard. Colonel Edwards met with the police and made for the Trent house. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Trent, this is a Colonel Edwards from Washington, DC. Good evening, Colonel. Hello, Colonel. The Colonel would like to ask you a few uh, questions. <laughs> questions? Well, what about Colonel? I want to ask you about your strange experience the other night. My, I hope I never see such a sight again. And that cold wind that appeared when I was attacked, I'll never forget. Do you recall a blast of wind or was it hot or a cold blast? It's kind of hard to explain. It wasn't cold, it wasn't hot. It was just a terrific force of wind. It was blowing toward a disappearing light in the cemetery. I could see a glowing ball disappearing off in the distance. You know, we found a lot of suspicious things out in that cemetery. Then again, we didn't find anything to base a fact or suspicion on. Did you see anything out there, Kelton? Too dark, Lieutenant, but something started stinking awful bad. The wind. Do you feel the wind? Someone is here. <gasps> Must not run. Come closer. Closer. It's back. Some of them. Must <gasps> kill. 
Kelton, shoot the creatures! My pleasure! My- uh, Kill! Destroy! Destroy! They're still coming at us! Take this, creatures! Us! Must! No! How can you destroy him? You die now! Here's a few bullets for you! <laughs> the creatures are turning into dust! What do you make of that? You got me! I didn't look that way a minute ago! What was it? It, it didn't fall? Uh, I fired every bullet I had! So did I! I don't know what it was or what happened. But unless that bag of bones can reassemble itself, it's out of the running now. Colonel, come over to the cemetery and I can show you where it all began. It's surprising the Trunt house is so close. <laughs> Colonel, I have been out to that cemetery so often you'd think I'd taken a lease on this place. Not a long lease, I hope. <laughs> I see what you mean. But you know, I can't help but feel the answers out here somewhere. Come on. I'll show you. Is the girl safe? Oh. Um, Mrs. Trent, you'd uh, better stay here at the house. Stay here? Alone? Not on your life. Uh, Kelton, you stay with Mrs. Trent. All right, Lieutenant. Hey, now, you stay close to the officer. I feel safer with you. Now, the Lieutenant knows best. Oh, I don't like it. But I guess there isn't much I can do about it. Officer Kelton remained with Paula at the Trent house. Using his flashlight, Lieutenant Harper led Colonel Edwards and Jeff to the nearby cemetery to inspect the open grave of Inspector Clay. Now, Jeff, do you know how to use a gun? <laughs> After four years in the Marine Corps? Here. What do you expect to find here? Well, there's only one answer to that, Mr. Trent. We'll know it when we find it. Inspector Clay's grave is right over here. Is that the one you told me it was broken into? Yes. Looks to me like someone is broken out instead of in. I figured that, but that's impossible. Look, Colonel, some things just can't happen. Yeah. Well, after that apparition that was draped across Mr. Trent's patio, I would say we should keep our minds open to anything. Look, Colonel, I'm a policeman. I've got to deal in facts, but I guess I'll have to go along with you. You know, I bet my badge right now we haven't seen the last of these weirdies. They'll discover our ship soon. The Invisicover must not last longer than our power being used. Our level is nearing low level. You're going to let them find us? It's the only way. These are the same men who have been so close so often. They must be halted before they can inform the others about us. Should I get the electrode gun? But there were others. They'll be taken too. Send the big one to get the girl and the policeman. I'll turn on the dictorobitary so we may converse with them. Hmm. Well, here's Clay's grave. You know, maybe we're barking up the wrong tree. One thing a policeman learns, Mr. Trent, is patience. Where's the burn spot you mentioned? Right over there. Look. Come on, we'll investigate, but move carefully. Did you feel that? The wind is blowing. Must kill! Clay? It, it, it's me, a Kelton! No! 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 Girl! Must not run! Stay away! Stay away! Ah! Let me go! Oh, my head. No, Clay. He, 
He's picking her up and, and taking her away. Where's he taking her to? Clay! Tana, ask Eros. The Earthlings aren't near and powerful. They're outside the ship now. Eros, do we have to kill them? Yes. It seems such a waste. Is there any other choice, Eros? The power is great to maintain our Invisicover and achieve Plan 9. If we continue with all, it may cause the engines to superheat. Well... Wouldn't it be better to kill a few now than with their meddling to permit them to destroy the universe? Yes, you're right. You're always right, Eros. Of course. But those are not my words. Those are the words of Rondo the Ruler. Please, you two, stay right where you are. We will do as you command. For the moment. You just do as I tell you. You do not need guns. They would be of no use to you now. They have been mighty useful before on flesh and blood, and you two look like you've got a lot of both. True. They would be effective upon us if you were to have the opportunity to use them. If you don't get away from that control board, I'll show you just how effective they can be. Shall we talk now? Or wait, your friends will be here shortly. What friends? Those you left at the house. If you've done anything to Paula. Take it easy, Mr. Trant. Oh, I assure you no harm has come to her. Would you like to see her? I will turn on the televisor so you can see her movements. Go ahead, but move very carefully. Big one. Why is the girl lying down? Go! Faint! Not dead. You fiend! I? A fiend? I am a soldier of our planet! We do not come here as enemies. We came only with intentions to share your wealth, to talk, to ask your aid. Why is it so important that you want aid? To harness your planet's vital power. First was your firecracker, a harmless explosive. Then your hand grenade. They began to kill your own people a few at a time. Then the bomb. Then a larger bomb. Then your scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb. Split the atom. Then the hydrogen bomb, where you actually explode the air itself. Earth has the power to bring destruction to the entire universe, served by your sun. The mineral left for the ultimate weapon is the solaronite hidden in your planet. Solaronite? Why, there's no such thing. Perhaps to you. But we've known it for centuries. Your scientists will stumble upon it, as they have with all the others. But the juvenile minds you possess will not comprehend its strength until it's too late. The solaronite is a way to explode the actual particles of the sun. That's... Why, well, it's impossible. Even now, your scientists are working on a way to harness the sun's rays. The rays of sunlight are minute particles. It is so far from your imagination, they cannot do as I have suggested. Why, a, a particle of sunlight can't even be seen or measured. Can you see or measure an atom? Yet you can explode one. A ray of sunlight is made up of many atoms. So what if we develop this bomb? Would he be even stronger than now? Stronger. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. That's all I'm taking from you. Get back there, you jerk. Let her finish. It's because of men like you that all must be destroyed. Headstrong. Violent. Stupid. You speak of solenorite, but just what is it? Take a can of your gasoline. Say this can of gasoline is the sun. Now you spread a thin line of it into a ball, representing the earth. 
From the sunlight, the sun particles have created saturated minerals within the planet. The minerals can generate a flame that will speedily travel around the earth and be able to explode a source. Then the solar night could be captured to explode the universe through a sunlight chain reaction. All the planets that the sunlight touches, the solar night bomb will destroy. She's mad. Mad? Is it mad that you destroy other people to save yourself? You have done this. Is it mad that one country must destroy another to save themselves? You have also done this. How then is it mad that one planet must destroy another that threatens the very existence of all- That's enough! Life is not so expensive on my planet. We don't cling to it like you do. Our entire aim is for the development of our planet. Eros, the people from the house. The power level is near empty. They are approaching. What happened to you? Oh, I would, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. Believe what? It was horrible. And, and, and he almost broke my shoulder. Look, whatever you're trying to say, if you don't make sense, we'll never get to the bottom of this. Now, now who slugged you? Inspector Clay. What? It was Clay, all right. Only not like we remember him. Well, well his grave was busted into, wasn't it? Man, next, you, you tell me you saw skeletons. We did earlier. Uh, all of us saw the lieutenant, the Colonel Edwards, everybody. Oh, well, where's the lieutenant now? Oh, we got to find him. Mrs. Trent is gone. I, I was left there to guard her, and then Clay showed up and put me out of the running. And the second time tonight, and I'm getting darn tired of it. Well, which way were they going? Uh, that way. Well, well, come on. Follow me. We must hurry. We need the solar night. Then one day it will be all gone. In one big puff of smoke and ball of fire. All that's out there. The stars, the planets, all just an empty void. You two had better come along with us. Aha! So it seems you think you have the upper hand. Look out there. Jeff. Jeff, it's Clay. With your wife! Go! Still! Faint! She is unharmed. But he would kill her in seconds if I so choose. Must not run. Kel Kelton, over here. Holy cow! Look there! It's Clay, all right. And there's no mistake in that. And he's, uh... He's entering some kind of a glass door. And he's got Mrs. Trent. Get your gun. Oh, from, from all I've seen gun, tonight, guns won't do any good. Uh, Clay's dead. And, and we buried him. How are we going to kill somebody that's already dead? I mean, dead. And yet there he stands. <laughs> that other one earlier, I, I emptied a full clip into him. Yeah, 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 I'm seeing it. And that's the only reason I'm listening to you. Look. I got an idea. Hurt him or not, we got to try something. I'm, I'm going to sneak up behind him, whop him over the head, and that ought to make him move, you know, follow me. Even when Clay was alive, he couldn't run fast enough to catch me. So, so when he does, you grab Miss Trent and run like lightning in the opposite direction. Do you think it'll work? <laughs> no, anything else to try? Come on, through this door. Must not Run! Hey, Clay! Catch me if you can! Girl, must stay here! Not move! I must kill! Must kill! Oh, I'm alright. Help the others. All right, he's chasing, he's chasing Larry. Your men have distracted the big one. This could only happen because the electrode ray is off. 
hold it right there. Do not go near those switches. You do not know what they will do. I wouldn't know one switch from another. One of these switches must open the door. Don't touch those switches. You are causing the converter power to overheat. The ship must regenerate. It's causing the ship to whose superheat. The engines cannot handle the power. Converter power is failing. Engines at superheat. Smoke is coming from the regenerator. What have you done? You will pay. All of Earth will pay for what you have destroyed and what you have done. Eros, there is a fire. We need to abort Plan 9 and launch the ship. There's no time. We must evacuate. Fire! Fire! Colonel, there's smoke. We must hurry. Colonel. Fool! You will destroy us all! There, I've opened the door. Get out of here, Jeff. The ship's on fire. Run! Eros! Eros, everything's on fire. What do we do? Eros! Ah! It burns! Ah! No! This planet was mine! How could you? Ah, what a world! What a world! The aliens perished in the fire while the rest escaped the burning heat. The flying saucer burned with a heat that raised the temperature in the surrounding area, area by 10 degrees. Within minutes, however, the metallic saucer melted into a liquid metal that ran into the graves of the cemetery, leaving no remains of the flying saucer. Hmm. I wonder if that's the last we're going to see of them. Perhaps. But sooner or later, there'll be others. And it's my guess, with the ship and the ray gun gone, Clay no longer has control. And he will rest now. We got to hand it to them, though. They're far ahead from us. Maybe too far. Maybe too far. I'm Leo College. I played Henry the Gravedigger, Mr. Calder, and General Roberts. I'm Matthew Craig. I played Lou the Gravedigger, Corporal Gregory, and <clears throat> Jamie the Crime Lab Technician. I'm Megan Lane, and I played Tana. Hi, I'm Madison Mantis, and I played Eros. Hi, I'm Monica Stark, and I played Mackie, Mary, and Mienna. I'm Fran Jansta, and I played Colonel Edwards. Hi, I'm Pat Blake, and I played Kelton. Hi, I'm Jessica Augustine, and I played Paula Trent. Hi, I am Ralph Churchill, and I played Lieutenant Harper. Hi, I'm Ken Albrecht, and I played Larry the Cop. Hi, I'm Don Hatterline, and I played Inspector Clay. Hi, I'm Jamie Churchill. I played Zabar, Supreme Commander of the Alien Race. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie Lee, and I played Vampira. Hi, I'm Monica Churchill, and I played Shirley and Rondo the Ruler. Hi, I'm Holly Sloan, and I played Edith. Hello, I'm Darius Russell, and I played Jeff Trent. John Hatterline, I played co-pilot Danny. And I'm Randy Markison, and I played Criswell. My friends, you have seen this incident based on sworn testimony. Can you prove that it didn't happen? Perhaps on your way home, you'll pass somebody in the dark and you will never know it, or they will be from outer space. Many scientists believe that another world is watching us at this moment. We once left at the horseless carriage, the airplane, the telephone, the electric light, vitamins, radio, and even television. And now, 
Some of us laugh at outer space. God help you in the future.